Today's topic pretty much affects all of us, especially as we get older, losing your head hair or going bald, right? Or having a receding hairline as the beginning or basically just thinning hair and so forth, honestly, makes you look and feel older. So today you'll discover the primary causes of hair loss and one big cause that most people aren't aware of, but the good news is one that you can mostly control with simple steps in your lifestyle. And the end result is better hair, healthier prostate for the guys, reduction in wrinkles and pimples, less joint pain, just pain all around, and honestly, a healthier life with fewer health problems as we age. Now, for decades, scientists have tried to find a cure for hair loss. Now, it's not available only because there are so many factors that cause hair loss. Genetics obviously plays a big role, a massive role, and there are many genetic variables as well, so it's not just one or two little things. I remember years ago, I went to Mexico, and there was this homeless guy on the side of the road. He had to be at least like 60 or 65 years old just due to all the wrinkles. Now, he was very thin, obviously malnourished, almost all of his teeth were missing, and yet he had a full head of jet black hair. It was amazing. So I mentioned this because regardless of his lack of nutrients and vitamins or potential hormone problems and stress or whatever other factors, he still had all of his hair and it's only because of his great hair genetics. Changing things back around, I also remember a couple of guys in high school who were probably, you know, around age 16 or 17 and they were already balding at such a young age. Now, those guys had horrible hair genetics, basically the exact opposite of that one homeless guy in Mexico. Genetics aside, there are also major hormonal factors as well, or mainly hormonal imbalances that cause hair loss. Have you ever heard the term short, fat, bald, and hairy? Well, typically the short and fat is resulting from high estrogen and female hormones. Sadly, when both estrogen and DHT levels are elevated, testosterone is actually greatly lowered and reduced, which is not what we want, especially for us guys. What's interesting is that science or researchers, they do know that if you do not have any DHT, dihydrotestosterone, which is produced from the conversion or the reduction of testosterone by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, then you will not go bald and you'll also have a small and healthy prostate your entire life. Sadly, you'll also have a tiny little penis. This is, in fact, how the drug finasteride, also known as Proscar and Propecia, was discovered. Now, going back forward, of course, eliminating DHT later on in life, you know, once you start hair loss and all that, does not guarantee a full head of hair. It'll surely decrease the speed of hair loss, It'll slow it down. It'll even stop it and maybe even reverse it in many people, especially if you start early enough. But it's not a one-shot cure because there are many genetic and hormonal and external factors that cause hair loss. Growing up, I actually thought it was all genetics, right? You either have it or you don't. But a long time ago, I read a study about how about 40 to 50% of Japanese men who came to the U.S. who were not balding at all started to go bald and were losing their hair. It wasn't a few generations later, it was the same people, but basically something in America coming to the US was causing them hair loss. But the question is why? Why does coming to America all of a sudden cause hair loss? Well, there is something called epigenetics, and to keep it simple, epigenetics basically states that your environment or lifestyle turn on or activate genes. Now, maybe these genes are dormant or basically they're, you know, sleeping in some people, but something in your external world triggers and turns them on. In this case, about 40 to 50% of these Japanese who came to America, you know, their so-called hair loss gene genes was like woken up and turned on. I'm simplifying all this, right? Just so to make a point. Again, what's the cause? Well, lots of factors, right? But stress is a big one, and that causes negative hormonal changes that come with it. More importantly, science has repeatedly linked inflammation 
as a major factor of hair loss as well and many health problems. Years ago, there was a study that people who took cyclosporin, a drug that they give to people who get new organs, it's an organ rejection drug, they started to grow a lot of head hair. Cyclosporin is a toxic drug and you don't want to take it all the time. However, one of the primary ways it works is by reducing inflammation. Remember how earlier I mentioned DHT, dihydrotestosterone, being a major cause of hair loss, and that's how Propecia and Proscar was developed, which is also linked to prostate problems and acne, DHT is? Well, high DHT also causes inflammation. Yes, in the prostate, but also your scalp and your skin. This is why people sometimes get pimples, because of these hormonal imbalances, which then cause inflammation. Another negative, especially for men, is that chronic inflammation can also lower testosterone levels, which isn't good and causes other hormonal imbalances and a lot of other problems that is linked to low testosterone. I don't want it to get boring or too scientific and you know you lose interest. But the point of today's topic is that inflammation for sure plays both a direct and indirect role in hair loss as well as lots of other health problems externally and internally. So, how do you reduce inflammation? There's lots of things, you know, there's lifestyle and stress and bouncing hormones and the foods we eat and don't eat, different herbs and vitamins and nutrients that you might be lacking, you know, proper sleep and so on and so forth. However, I've covered a few of these topics in other videos and I've listed the direct links to each of these important videos below, one of them being top three causes of inflammation, how to avoid them. Another video is four best ways to reduce inflammation. Another one is five best foods to reduce inflammation. And finally, how inflammation can be a major cause of low testosterone levels. Take action today because reducing inflammation will for sure improve your health, your longevity, and your hair. Now, you may not be able to change your genetics, but you can improve inflammation, and this I guarantee.